Alright, we're back and uh, thank you for tuning in. If you're driving in your car and you're watching us, pull over. I don't want any accidents. Okay, so tonight we have a few things to talk about, mainly this book here. And we're going to be talking about autonomous vehicles and hopefully Ski is going to give us a call because there's something going on that uh, we need everybody to call some legislators about. So, Ski, if you're watching, we're waiting for your call tonight. Uh, I'll send you a text. I have a video that we're going to show. It's about three minutes, so sit back and enjoy this ride. Autonomous driving, a car that drives on its own. What will traffic look like in a few years? When will we see it on the streets and how is it going to work? We'll show and explain it in this clip. The BMW Group is implementing autonomous driving in their vehicles over five levels. With each higher level, the responsibility for driving will shift more and more from the person at the steering wheel to the car itself. Level 1 already started some years ago. Assistance systems support the driver, for instance with active cruise control with stop and go function, distance to the vehicle in front or warnings against collisions with pedestrians. BMW combines these and other groundbreaking innovations under the name BMW Personal Co-Pilot. Today, the second level has been reached with the latest BMW 7 or 5 series, or the X3 for instance. Here the driver is aided by assistance systems and can remove the hands from the steering wheel for brief periods. In 2021, we expect to see the third level. The driver will sometimes be able to completely turn their attention away from driving, but must be able to step in again on short notice. By 2021, the first pilot fleet should be on the streets and level 4 should be reached. Here, drivers might even be able to sleep. They must, however, still be basically fit to drive in case they have to take over control of the car for specific sections of the journey. It is at the most advanced level of development between 2025 and 2030 that cars will drive autonomously. The driver will become another passenger and won't even have to be able to drive, as the car will assume complete responsibility for the task of driving. So how will this work technically at BMW? The partly automated driving at level 2, stereo cameras and... Okay, we'll continue that video in a minute. Go ahead and put the caller through, Oscar. Go ahead, Ski. Hey, PJ, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, while you were calling, I was uh, showing a clip that BMW put out about autonomous vehicles. And they got five levels that they're talking about. Level one, two, three. By level four, you can actually sleep while you're driving. And they were going to get to level five. So... Tell everybody what's going on right now in Springfield. Okay, so before we get to what's going on in Springfield, let me uh, clarify what those levels are. Go ahead. So those are, the, those are the industry standard levels of automation for a car. Okay? Correct. Uh, so every company, every company out there has agreed to these levels. They agree to what they say. SAE and Society of American Engineers. They're the ones who develop the terminology. It's pretty much industry standard. Uh, right now, autonomous vehicles are level three, some are level four. And level four means no driver present, and that's what they're going for right now. Okay. On the video they show level four, there was a driver present, but he could take his hands off the wheel and do other stuff while the car's going, but must be fit. So yeah, this might be an older one. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of, of disagreement between what level three and level four mean between some of the companies. But anyway, so what's going on in Springfield is Representative Mike Zaleski has a bill, House Bill 2747. And it originally was in Transportation Committee. It failed to reach third reading back in May. So it went to the Rules Committee. Well, very quietly, the day after the election, three members of the Rules Committee met and they advanced this legislation to the House floor, which was for Amendment 2. And this is sitting at the Illinois House right now, on the floor of the Illinois House. And if it were to pass, it would legalize all forms of autonomous vehicles and allow level 4 and level 5 to be on Illinois roadways with no human driver present whatsoever. Now that last part's very important because as it sits right now, there is no technology that is at that point. So anybody 
people would be putting forth a vehicle on level four or five, with no human driver present, would be very much endangering the lives of the Illinois voters. Right, not only motorcyclists, but motors, motorists in general, and pedestrians for that fact. Yeah, anybody on the road. Uh, Waymo Technologies, which is Google, is the, uh, they're the, they're the best company for autonomous vehicles right now. They are just now getting ready to enter into a testing phase in the next year when they level four vehicles with no driver present. Uh, and it's going to be a very strict controlled test environment. So, it, for anybody to just legalize that throw them out there on the Illinois roadway is a very serious concern. And how did they pass, how did they get past Marty Sandoval and everybody? So, Marty Sandoval's over in the Senate, but the way they got past the Transportation Committee uh, at the House is that when this bill failed to meet, a bill has to be read three times Correct. before it be voted. Correct. So, when it failed to meet third read in May, it was referred to Rules Committee. And rather than Rules Committee sending it back to Transportation Committee, they went ahead and just threw it straight to the floor of the House from Rules Committee. So that's so, how it went away. Is so who's on Transportation, Ski? Uh, Transportation Committee is John D'Amico, Tim Butler, a lot of really good friends of ours. Uh, Mike Zaleski is not part of Transportation Committee but he's been very active with Transportation Committee working on this issue. Now Zaleski's out at a 23rd Ward, right? Right. Okay. Now the reason why this is happening, the General Assembly is very angry with the executive order that the governor signed about two and a half weeks ago. So they are doing this as a reaction to that executive order, which as we all know, a made of Illinois opposed that executive order. Too. Correct. Now, it gets even funnier. There is a meeting tomorrow at the Illinois House that we were not invited to. However, some friends of ours were, and they told us about the meeting, and now we're being welcomed into the meeting to discuss autonomous vehicles with different stakeholders from around the state. But originally, it was just going to be an industry-only meeting, a bunch of business groups, that want to force this technology on the Illinois roadways. No safeguards whatsoever for motorcyclists or motorists. So you will be down there then, right? Uh, our, our contract lobbyist, Todd Vandermeid, will absolutely be at the meeting. I am hoping to potentially be at the meeting, but I have some other things that are going on as well, so I may not be able to make it. Well, if we get a chance, we'll reach out to Harper and have him reach out to D'Amico. D'Amico's a good friend of ours up here in the city. Uh, D'Amico is, is, John is very much aware of the situation. Uh, you know, <clears throat> basically everybody on the committee got slighted because these three members of the Rules Committee decided to pass it straight to the floor. Who's on the Rules Committee, Ski? Uh, I would have to look, but generally those are the most loyal of Madigan soldiers. Oh, no, really? Come on. Yeah, well, Rules Committee controls everything. So right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to keep an eye on it. And you did get a hold of Rick from Lama? I, I actually, he's on my list of calls tonight. Uh, it looks like we don't think this bill is going to move, but we're being prepared just in case it does. Okay, well, keep us updated, and we'll get the information out as fast as we can. You know that. And we'll start making those calls. Will do, will do. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about while you've got me? I'm on the road to Southern Illinois tonight. Yeah, um, you might want to wait till after 9.30 to get a hold of Rick because he's with Cookie tonight uh, starting a journey. All righty, I will take care of that later on then. Okay, I'm glad you understand. Right. Yes, sir. Ski, thanks for the call. Um, if you get any more information, just give us a buzz. And, you know, if you can get down here one morning, one afternoon, uh, Tuesday nights, we start at 7. I know. I'll see what I can do, all right? All right, Ski. Thanks for calling in. All right. No problem. Thank you, brother. Bye. All right. So we're going to get back to this video because I want to go through the rest of the levels. And let's... Uh, pick up where we left off. Radar sensors monitor the immediate surroundings. 
Level 3. The highly automated driving requires highly advanced sensors such as laser scanners, video Notice cameras, show radar cycle. systems, and area maps provided by HERE, which together produce a 360-degree model of the vehicle's environment. This makes it possible to calculate more complex driving maneuvers. And in 2021, your daily commuting might look like this. In level 4, for the fully automated driving starting in 2021, all sensors and cameras will supply far more precise data. Further real-time data from improved maps by here will also be factored in the process of computing driving maneuvers. And level 5, autonomous driving is due to be implemented in cities in the time frame from 2025 to 2030. For the BMW Group, the vision of autonomous driving has long since begun. Okay, so I don't know if any of you agree with autonomous vehicles. I certainly don't. Um, they did show, I, I think they were trying to incorporate motorcycles into that video, but again, when we talk to Ski, you so far they do not pick up motorcycles. And as we know from out west, it doesn't pick up pedestrians because a woman was killed by an autonomous vehicle, even though there was an operator in the car, but... He had one of these, and he decided, you know what, I'll play on this way. This car's driving, and it killed this poor woman. So that's a fact. That you can Google up and look up, and that's a fact. That actually did happen. So uh, we're going to get more on that probably tomorrow. The best thing, the best part of it is John D'Amico is a good friend of Abate. Uh, we have a good working relationship with him and the others that are on the Transportation Committee. Um, like Ski said, on the Rules Committee, those are all Madigan guys, and Madigan's pissed at the outgoing governor, who still is a good friend of ours. Don't don't ever mistake that. He's a member of our chapter. So um, call us. Let us know what you think about the autonomous vehicle uh, situation, especially they're going to do it in Illinois. It's coming. It was already signed at executive order, but uh, obviously it's not a done deal yet because there's got to be more testing done. We have... There's another video that I found regarding it, a small one, and it was from CBS did this. And let me see if I can In find it. In the next 60 seconds, I'm going to show you exactly wanna, how you can get paid $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 a month to do something that literally... 2018 was supposed to be the year that dreams of self-driving cars became a reality. While car companies continue to unveil new driverless concepts, those predictions of a truly autonomous vehicle may be a lot further away than we think. Tim Stevens is editor-in-chief of the automotive website Roadshow at our partner CNET. Tim, good morning. Good morning. So Tesla and Google both said this is the year. But it isn't. <laughs> well, it, it might be for Google. Waymo's self-driving technology is expected to be available in the Phoenix area this year. So if you happen to live there, you might actually be living in the future before the end of the year. But for those of us who live elsewhere, we still got a little while to wait, unfortunately. And Tesla, yeah, absolutely, we still have a while to wait there, too. Why is that? Ultimately, the technology is almost ready at this point. The sensors are there, and a lot of the supercomputing power that you need is almost developed as well. But they really need more testing, and they really need the cost of this stuff to come down. Those sensors are still very expensive, and the supercomputing computers that you need in the trunk to process all the data, those are pretty pricey too, to the point where people really wouldn't be able to afford this technology even if it were available. So for Waymo, you say the technology is there. What about the regulation though? The regulation is definitely one of the bigger roadblocks that's stopping this sort of development right now. Phoenix is kind of a hotbed for testing because there's very little legislation in that area, which means companies can kind of do whatever they want to. Elsewhere in the U.S. though, it's, it's much more difficult and there are no laws in place that will allow that kind of testing to enable the companies to really take the steps forward that they need to do so. Well, okay, so if the tech is there, the regulatory infrastructure is developing, yep. why do we keep seeing these high-profile crashes of these automotive uh, self-driving cars? There have been very few crashes, actually, if you look at the number of miles that these cars are covering. Waymo, in particular, the former Google self-driving car project, has covered millions and millions of miles with very few incidents, and those crashes that they have had have been actually the fault of other drivers. So actually, these cars are proving to be more safe than human drivers, but of course, whenever there is a crash, we have so much more data about those crashes that we can really examine them in a lot of minutia. Okay. We, we talked about legislation, Tim. What, what about the insurance industry being ready for this change? It's definitely a big concern for insurers, of course. 
course, because these cars are expected to be much more safer, of course. But there's a lot of questions about who is liable in a crash and ultimately will you even need insurance. Right now, of course, you certainly will because laws in every state require that kind of thing. But going forward, we may see a different sort of approach to buying cars where actually you buy into a car access program and insurance is kind of baked into that. We're beginning to see things like that already. Volvo, for example, has a program called Care by Volvo where you don't buy a car. You pay a given amount per month and you get a car plus insurance and everything else that you need. It's interesting. I interviewed the CEO of Uber a couple of months ago and they were introducing their, fly, their driving taxis. Mm. And so I'm curious as to while these companies are developing the technology, the demand is not quite there yet. So what do they see that consumers don't see? Yeah, in fact, there's there's not only demand, there's actually fear. We see study after study that shows that Americans are afraid of this technology, that they don't want cars to drive themselves. But the belief is that they'll be so practical, so convenient, and so safe that ultimately people will begin to change their minds. And for a company like Uber, they spend most of their money on the salaries of drivers. So mm -hmm. if they can actually take that person out of the car, they not only get a lot cheaper, but they get rid of a lot of the risks that they've had with background checks and things like that. Some of the bigger problems that they face suddenly all go away. Well, I mean, it's hugely disruptive for the labor industry too, right? Yeah. You lose, those are all jobs. jobs yeah. you place them with robots, self-driving cars. That's okay. So, my opinion is, what do you need a driverless car for? If what are you going to do? Have your car go somewhere for you? You're going to go sit in the back seat. Can you imagine getting out, saying you're going shopping, whatever you're going to do, and you get in the car, you say, you know what, I'm going to sit in the back seat, let the car drive itself. That's ridiculous. My opinion, I want to be in control of a vehicle that can potentially kill a lot of people. So, uh, if you noticed in this video, this last one, they didn't show motorcycles at all. They didn't even talk about motorcycles. In the previous video, they did show motorcycles on the road, but it was the same bike every time I kept looking, see if it was a different bike. So, I don't know what, what everybody else's thoughts are. I don't think I'm ready for it. And like they said in the previous video, they're talking 2025, 2030. That's a ways down the road, you know, for technology to catch up. But again, now you've got a supercomputer that you've got to have in your car. It's got to be driving your car. What about the guy who can hack into that? He can take over your car, send it wherever he wants to, send it into a crowd. Any date yet for a DW? Debbie, I have no clue what you're talking about. Please call our hotline at 312-738-1060 and talk to Oscar, because I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, again, hackers, they hack into your vehicle. Everything can be hacked into. They hack into the government's websites, these secure websites. Okay, they're taking information out and selling it on the web, the dark web. Yes, the dark web. So, yes, somebody can take over your vehicle while you're not really driving. Oh, sorry, wrong pet. Nice. Oh, that's okay, Deb. I didn't want to talk to you anyways, so don't call the show. Uh, anyways, get well, Deb. You better because uh, we're counting on you, and especially this dude right here. That's Oscar saying hi to you, Deb. Um, again. Do you want a car that can drive itself? What do you need a car for? I can I can almost see it out west because I've driven out west a lot. I've taken the family out west. We've taken a lot of trips to California when I was younger. And you get a little road, road weary, you know, driving, especially out west. It's beautiful scenery. You can't really look around. So you can actually let go of the wheel, sit back. This is what you'd be doing though. This is the first thing you would do if you were able to let go of the wheel. You wouldn't be looking at the scenery, the, the big giant dinosaurs on the side of the road when you're going out to South Dakota, the jackalopes and the 90 million inch ball of twine. You're not going to look at that. You're going to be playing on this damn thing. Worst invention of the forever. Abe Lincoln said this thing will never work. It'll never go over. I'm telling you, he might have been right. I read it on Facebook. So, autonomous vehicles, yes or no? Come to our next meeting, which is going to be, Oscar gave me the updated sheet, so I don't have to show you the old one. Check this out. Next meeting date is Wednesday, November 21st. That's the day before, gobble, 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 baby, turkey day. So, 
We're at the brewery, 3848 North Harlem Avenue. Do I have to be a member? No, I don't have to be a member to show up. Come on out, have a good time with us. Get some of these cool stickers that Oscar basically gives away. There's more. He's got these. He's got the ones that you can't, you can put on and they're transparent. You put them on backwards on your window. I can't show it to you because it won't come up on here. We're going to put it on that window right there. What do you think? Anyways, like I said, come to the membership meeting. Come out and have some fun with us. We meet the third Wednesday of every month. Same place. Um, good time, good people. You'll get a lot of good information. And I'm sure at this meeting coming up, you're going to get a lot more information about these autonomous vehicles. Because <coughs> the meeting is next week, excuse me. And by tomorrow evening, Ski, who is the state legislative coordinator, will have a lot more information. And it'll probably come out in an email. We'll put it up on the website. I'll get a hold of Kevin. So you will be informed. We are one of the most informed groups there is. When it comes to uh, goofy legislation that affects us, we are one of the most informed, if not the most informed. In fact, we had stuff on our website before the state even knew about it. So that's how good we are. Kevin's pretty good about that. Um, step out, come see us. If you didn't come out Saturday, you missed a hell of a party. Oscar was there. Um, I won a couple signs that Oscar wanted to win. I took care of Oscar, don't worry about that. Uh, you're welcome. We had, uh, I want to put a big thank you out to Lama. Lama came out, uh, they supported us real well. They signed up some new members, they renewed some old members, and Nellie, damn it was good to see you out there, baby. You look good. She's 70 years old. 70 years old, oh yeah. she's Nellie, you're still looking good, baby, I gotta tell you. So, and I, I love seeing her. They took, well, let's see who this is. Hello? Well, uh, he'll call you back in 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. It's me, but we're doing a live TV show right now, Veronica. <laughs> 10 minutes. No, 10 minutes. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Doctor's office. Got to take the call. Um, Scotty says you've been slapped by... Oh... Okay, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, where am I? Oh, Nellie. Nellie is a longtime Abate member. She's been with Lama for, I think, uh, about a half a million years. She's just starting to get back into riding and everything. They bought a, not the Spider. Oscar, remember what they called the bike she bought? Maybe the Slingshot? The Slingshot, yes. So, speaking of that, I knew I'd seen it in here. i got to show you guys this. So, in this book here, well, here, let me show you what book this is. This is the uh, Motorcycle uh, Operator's Manual. And on this page here, I was reading, this is what they call trike. But it's a three-wheel or triple track is how they, uh, let's see, can we get in on there? Yeah, so they got motorcycle, motorcycle with sidecar, and trike, and on the other page they got moped, motorcycle, and class L. Now, if you don't know what a class L motorcycle is, I can tell you. Class L is a uh, 149cc or less motor-driven cycle. Of course, 150 and up, M class, moped. I don't know if they have a, you can use the L for mopeds. But these are considered motorcycles, and you do have to have an M-Class license for that. So, Nelly, it was good to see you, babe. I mean, I can't believe you're still running around hanging with the boys. But you got to know, Chicago Bait, we love you. The family loves you. We love, we love Oscar. Just to let you know, we do love you, Oscar. And if, in case nobody knows, Oscar is like the man behind the scenes. Oscar is like the big toe on a foot. You know, we can't walk without Oscar. We'd fall over. So, uh, from all of us, to all of you, to all of Oscar, our big toe in the foot of life. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.